What is going on, Lunatics? New camera angle. Who it is? So we've got some information coming out about the SEC. What's going on with Terraform Labs? Again, not exactly directly related to Luna Classic, but it's still Lunk adjacent. And it's really kind of fascinating what the SEC is looking to do. And I don't think that they're going to win this. It doesn't appear to me, it doesn't appear to me to be a valid argument that they are making. In fact, it feels to me um, that maybe, just maybe, the SEC could have stopped jump trading and all these other organizations from doing what they did in order to collapse Terra Luna, and they did not. And I, I almost feel like at this point, the SEC was trying to farm Terra Luna Classic, uh, the, the the Terraform Labs and Duquan uh, for revenue. It's really looking a little bit bizarre to me. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And if you like this content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, and the bell to be notified. And we're going to talk about the LBUN project one more time, bringing it around one more time. Get some information for you. I don't know that I shared it with you before. If I didn't, I'm going to right now. And if I did before, you're about to hear it for a second time. So let's kick this off so that you guys can get a read on what I'm talking about here. The SEC suggests a $5.3 billion fine for Duquan. Now, um, Terraform Lab says that the maximum fine should be $3.5 million, and Duquan is offering to pay $800,000. That is a huge differential. Now, the SEC wants to blame um, uh, wants to blame Terraform Labs. And by the way, the, the programming, everything, that is their fault. They, they did exactly what the, the SEC found them, um, accused them of, and the jury found them guilty of. So uh, they're requesting a $5.3 billion uh, fine for defrauding investors. Uh, the SEC is also asking the court to order Terraform and Quan to play $420 million and $100 million respectively in civil penalties after a $4.7 billion disgorgement and prejudgment. So the court should send an unequivocal message that this sort of brazen conduct is not tolerated uh, by the SEC uh, for securities laws. Quan and his company were found liable for misleading customers about the safety of investing in its AFT, uh, which was Terra. Uh, and its underlying blockchain utility, according to a New York uh, court jury's verdict. Now, the 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 situation was very, very, very simple. In fact, uh, Duquan reached out to Jump Crypto Trading, a division of Jump Trading in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States, and he asked them to back the the UST, which they did. They they backed Terra, and after backing Terra, they became a a huge holder of supply. After that, Duquan issued a statement in May of 2021 saying, hey, guys, we fixed it. Everything's fine. And the algorithmic uh, stablecoin corrected itself. He didn't point out that he had, that he had gotten an investor in. So uh, he deceived people by saying that the safety of this was based on the algorithm. And it was not. So that should be um, a sign that there is a problem. And of course, uh, underlying that, that he was guilty of this. There's no argument, but um, the th th $5.3 billion total fine seems a little bit excessive. However, uh, they are now blaming him entirely for the $60 billion failure. And by the way, I agree that he is the responsible party because it's his responsibility to take care of his investors. And he did not do that. And he, you know, issued statements saying that he finds it fascinating when things fail, stuff like that. Did not create a good environment for this, but five billion, I don't know about that. But uh not my call. It's gonna be a jury who's gonna decide exactly what the penalties should be. I think they're gonna rule more in line with what uh Terraform Labs argues because the maximum fine would be 3.5 million. Uh our securities laws, remember. They're not outdated, according to the SEC. So maximum fine, $3.5 million. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, next up, there are, let's pull it up, some governance proposals here. Um, governance rules to prevent double and network validating. Uh, this is something pr pretty much targeting, um, you know, I want to say that this is, you know, Jesus is Lord, obviously, is one of those who famously uh, uses the name of the, the Christian Lord here. Uh, to get people to validate and sign up with two different validators, giving him an inordinate amount of influence in this ecosystem, along with people like all nodes, stuff like that. Uh, and then message comment, uh, new comment system for the Terra Classic blockchain is up for um, uh, a thing. And then we have uh, we have another person over here, ban religion from Lunk governance, which I mean, again, I, I'm not I'm not pro religion, 
but I am pro free speech, so I, I don't see how I don't see that's not that's not decentralization. That's not freedom if you do that. Uh, the pit rebate program for burning is also out here. The ultimate repeg plan. Let's get into the ultimate repeg plan real quick here. So um, the uh, the concept is the challenge is straightforward. Maintaining a stable peg requires a circulating supply capable of dynamically adjusting to market conditions. The chain must efficiently absorb surplus tokens and release them when demand arises. My proposal is to entrust this critical task to the community, making it the guardians of the peg. In doing so, we empower community members with the responsibility of ensuring stability while offering them opportunities to profit from their active participation. Uh, to earn staking rewards, LUNK stakers are required to lock a specific amount of USTC alongside their LUNK delegation. For example, one USTC for each 10,000 LUNK. When the price of USTC falls below the peg stakers are required to lock additional ustc i already don't like this i can already tell you this this is this this um th this this creates obligation for people that will not be maintained i can tell you that that, that there's a, an issue with this already remember there is a 21 day unstaking process so let's see how if it addresses that when the price of ustc falls below the peg stakers are required to lock additional ustc domain eligibility for staking rewards this prompts stakers to purchase ustc at a discounted rate thereby exerting upward pressure on ust and driving it back towards the peg at the price of ustc returns to the peg stakers are no longer required to maintain the additional ust USTC balance to earn rewards, allowing them to freely sell their USTC holding at a profit. Uh, let's say the USTC drops to 0 .1, 0 0.018 below the target peg of 0 0.02. To bring it back to the peg, stakers must lock more USTC. For example, if a staker has a million Lunk delegate and already has 100 USTC lock, he needs to add an extra 50 to keep earning rewards on his delegation. He buys 50 USTC at 0 0.018. Lock then pushes the price towards the peg. Once USTC hits two, he withdraws his 50 USTC and then sells them at two cents, making a whopping 11% profit while defending the peg. Now, let's say the price of USTC rises above the target peg of two. Let's say to 22, stakers face an opportunity to make some profit by selling some of their locked USTC. For instance, if a staker has 1 million lunk delegated 100 USTC locked, he may have the option to unlock 25 USTC. He can then sell these 25 USTC at a market price of 0.022, pushing the price down towards the peg. Subsequently, as the price returns to the peg at 2 cents, he will buy back 25% effectively, making a 10% profit. I'm already opposed to this. I don't think it's a bad concept, by the way. I'm just opposed to it because we're trying to maintain a peg at two cents. We should be trying to maintain a peg at higher percents as we get more and rewards, benefits, bonuses, anything that we can use uh, in this process to drive price action up and to earn enough to uh, basically hold the peg. For example, if we had $200 million locked into um, uh, something to guarantee it. And that's what we have to raise. We have to raise enough money to guarantee the peg at whatever that amount is to begin with. So we have, if we have to peg it to one cent, then you peg it to a penny until we've raised another amount to take it to two cents and then three cents because we have to be able to guarantee it. And I don't think that the community is capable of guaranteeing it. Now, in the event that we could do something along these lines, maybe the community it, it would help in the contribution of getting it upwards a little bit, but uh, obliging me to continue buying to secure, that's not going to make something thrive. That's gonna make a, a demand obligation and a financial uh, and a financial purpose that in the event that, for example, somebody decides to attack again and they start to pull out their USTC and sell it on the open market, drive the price down, then everybody has to contribute more and continue to hold the price. And I don't imagine that that's going to work at all. I mean, that just when you consider, just think about, think it through. You're not going to get everybody. We're not all here for the same purpose. We're not here for that reason. So, and by the way, stakers validate, not everybody is here for that. To be. So the government driven peg adjustment uh, governance sets the initial price peg and increment adjust it upwards through a parameter change vote based on market conditions uh, and the market conditions would have to be how much actual money we have in order to guarantee the peg uh, flexibility of USTC locking there's no lockup duration or restriction on USTC allowing stakers to lock and unlock holdings at any time look this is something it, this might by the way could have I think could have been something possible uh, $16,000 Bitcoin if we were using our money to buy Bitcoin at that point in order to stabilize the price action and to hold it um, then this could have been something that would work but at sixty seven thousand dollar bitcoin right now that's that's not this just does not work 
Uh, and I don't know if it works for you, it just does not work for me. Dynamic USTC locking ratio, uh, USTC locking ratio adjusts dynamically based on the Oracle price. So uh, it, it's complicated here. Uh, there'd have to be, in the event that something like this were considered to be something that we would do, it would have to be an automated sort of process. It, it just, we just have to. Uh, partial staking rewards, uh, user-friendly and accessible. Uh, it's not. Uh, decentralization, I, I would argue that that is true. Uh, resilience, I'm not sure that that's the case because, again, we're not all here for the same purpose. Uh, we're giving a lot of credit to people uh, for, for you know, to, to be willing to just reach into their pocket and keep buying more and more and more and more and more uh, to keep things going and to spend 20 cents to, to buy a few USTC to help stabilize is just people are going to be annoyed by this. Um, community empowerment, the solution gives back control to the community. Maybe uh, positive impact on price by offering us a practical use case for USTC within the ecosystem. This solution encourages USTC holders to consider purchasing Lunk to leverage their USTC holdings. Uh, USTC as a reliable store of value. First of all, um, there, there's no none of this appears to burn any tokens. So uh, there's no progress that could ever or would ever be made. So uh, I don't see how this can evolve at this point uh, as far as disadvantages goes potential user attrition and and that should be the end of it right there that's that's the end of it right there uh, while there's a risk that some users or stakeholders may opt to unstake and exit the ecosystem potentially affecting network participation and stability this concern should be partially mitigated by the influx of new investors eager to participate and support the successful repeg of ustc uh, that's not why they're doing it so um the, the altruism uh, i admire but there's just no way. So we're going to move on from this. However, this might come up for governance. So I would I would encourage you to do your due diligence uh, and I'll allow yourself at least to read through this repeg plan and decide whether or not it's something for you, just in case it does come up for a vote. Over on station, our governance proposals, uh, 12095 did not pass the 10x uh, of the fees. Um, the, the restore IBG, that's obviously going to pass. Uh, minimum commission, two and a half percent. You can, by the way, uh, go look and see. We're going to look at the voting in just a second and then change the reward distribution of the burn tax. We're going to be looking at that one as well. We're getting a little long winded here, so we're going to move on to price. All right, guys, price action so far. We've got uh, one, uh, we've got one, two, three, four, four of the last five days have been pump days. So uh, it seems like we're having a nice recovery. We went to the 786. I told you guys probably a little sideways action. The first candle mints sideways. Uh, I do hope there's a little bit more of an upward momentum, but we'll see whether or not that happens or not. Uh, it doesn't look like fundamentally anything has changed. Uh, so no reason to recorrect or or address anything. Uh, as far as volume goes, down 33% on the day, but the volume, but the uh, price is up just a half a percent. USTC uh, down 23%, uh, price down just a little bit. By the way, uh, when we're talking about this 178 million, that's basically a one, you know, uh, that's that's where you get the peg from. Uh, now, coming over to Lunk Dash, uh, this is minimum commission 2.5. Let's go see who is voting for minimum commission. Um, yes. Um, uh, it, look, it looks like most of the people that you know, um, that, that you, you trust, are voting yes to a minimum commission. The people who are voting no, all nodes, Jesus is Lord. The people who want control, it looks like. Uh, and again, that's just my opinion. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of people here abstaining, saying that they have no uh, vested interest in this uh, situation. But I would be interested here to find out what the reasoning is behind people wanting to say no, because if they're offering zero commission and they're doing it on a zero basis, and then they're voting against the building of the ecosystem, you have to ask yourself, why are they doing that? Okay. Um, and then Lunk Burn Tracker, 246 million. So it looks like the activity has declined uh, a little bit in the last seven days. So you know, we'll, we'll, we'll need to kick it up a notch as we continue to get into this. We're not in the bull market yet, but as we get closer to the bull market. Now, uh, let's take a moment here because it's time to talk about the Elbun project. And there was something specific that I wanted to address, and that was the base token. So um, base token is as follows. Base is a liquid staking token for Lunk. The price of base is determined by a predefined curve based on the total supply. The shape of the reward curve uh, who buy for those who buy base earlier before leveling off for stable gains. When you buy base, it's automatically staked with a Lunk validator and the rewards are fed back into the token bonding curve to increase the value. Base has a 4.8% transaction tax. 0.6 is used to burn Lunk. 1.8 is fed back into the bonding curve to increase the value of base. And then 2.4 is used at the discretion of the project for expenses, development, and advertising. 
like me. Uh, I'm not part of this, but you know, you know what I mean. Uh, base is only transacted in Lunk, so it will reflect increases and decreases to Lunk based on current transaction fees and staking APY base annualized return. Uh, over the past three days is over 217%. Currently selling your base requires a 21-day unbonding before Lunk is returned to your wallet. Um, chart to track base price, quickly release functionality of base. Uh, these are upcoming. And then start a trading pair on a DEX. Uh, base is not designed to function like a pump and dump gambling token. Do not plan to trade in and out of base because the tax will erode your returns. Instead, the best approach is to buy early to take advantage of the growth portion of the base price curve. Also, by buying early, you will reap transactions APY from others on boarding over time. Let your rewards compound and if your need arises. Uses the quick release function uh, available soon to exit base quickly. Otherwise, when you decide to sell, avoid the fee by waiting the 21 day unbonding period. Now, if you're interested, then you can bring your lunk over here, connect your wallet, and this is going to be base token swap at dot netlify dot app so you'll be able to come in here and start swapping uh your your lunk for base tokens um and then follow at l bun project this is lunk burn this is all about burning luna classic and and all about increasing the value uh base is reducing the lunk circulating supply for fun and for profit uh so if you are interested come to the l bun project dot tech and check this out uh, of course but do your own research make sure that you check out the white paper make sure that you check out everything that you need to know about the project before you enter into it and um guys the bull run is almost here the having is almost here the hong kong ethereum etf is almost here you like erc20 we all like erc20 and the best way for you to accumulate more erc20 tokens or more Bitcoin. It's Cryptonomy.Finance. If you've been here before, you know that I've been talking about a lot of these tokens. There's over 400 that you can choose from. They offer an exchange with the, with the best rates uh, without commissions and support from a highly qualified support and trading team 24-7. And this is available to every participant. Of course, you get immediate support if you are a VIP. And you can deposit UST into your Cryptonomy account, and then you can start to buy the desired assets that you want to use over here and exchange them as needed. Over 400 of them. And there's going to be a lot of updates coming out over the next couple of days, weeks, and months. So guys, if you are looking to advance your crypto portfolio, you need more tokens. Why not let the tokens that you currently have work for you? Go to Cryptonomy.Finance, sign up today, and let it grow. I think we've wrapped it up. So um, we got there. Took a little bit longer than we normally do, guys. I apologize about that. Uh, we're going to be talking about how Lunk gets to a dollar or a dime or a penny very, very soon because we're going to start looking at how we can get these price pumps going on with the factors that we currently have in store. So uh, until then, this is not financial advice. I'm always right. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon.